today we're going to be learning about creating a collage. So this is a lesson that is going to be based around the iconic earth and sky collages that are done by American artist Lorna Simpson. So to give you a little bit more about the artist, Lorna Simpson is an American photographer and she's a multimedia artist. She was born in 1960 in Brooklyn, New York, and she was the first African-American woman to have a solo exhibit at the Museum of Modern Art in New York in 1990. Her Earth and Sky Collages series feature vintage images of women from issues of Jet and Ebony magazines. And Lorna Simpson's artwork often explores the idea of identity. So let's look at some of her artwork here. In this particular series, she explores the idea of black women's hair, which has been a source of beauty and pride, but also historically a source of discrimination. So she uses, or Simpson replaces the hair with brilliant swashes of trailing colors and geometric crystal formations. So meaning that she adds in all these beautiful colors with geometric crystals and formations, and it basically transforms the original collages or pictures that she took from magazines and, um, you know, ads and different things. And she made it out of something new entirely. So just looking at these pictures here, what do you really see? You're looking at collages of, you know, a person that has been taken from a picture from a fashion magazine or being a photographer using your own, um, you know, people that are, you know, that you have and those pictures that you make. So let's even look a little bit further at her pictures. How does she use color? How does she use the collage and lines and value to really make her work stand out? So what we're going to be doing today is we are going to focus on this particular image here, which is from her Earth and Sky series. And you can see how with other examples here that these are, you know, we cut out the hair and it could be for anything. You could do this with an animal too. And then you replace it with these beautiful crystals. So we're going to be focusing on a lot of line, we're going to make um, a collage value, and we're also going to create the illusion of form by creating these crystals. So let's get started. What you're going to need today is a piece of paper and either using a crayon or a permanent marker to draw with. And then you're going to need an image that has a face or an animal on it usually like a rather large one, <clears throat> and a pair of scissors. So the first thing that you want to do once you find this, and fashion magazines are great, using any newspapers and things are great as well, shopping ads work too. You want to cut around the person's hairline and remove their hair completely. And I know it's going to sound and look silly at first, but the final product is going to be really great once you remove all of that. If you find that in your picture that you have a larger neck or shoulders or legs, etc., cetera, um, just try to trim it down because our focal point, which is the, the part that we want to think about and see the most, is going to be the crystal-like hair. So you want to get rid of the body and different things as much as you can. And then we're going to place this more near the bottom of our paper. But if it's floating in the middle a little bit too, that's fine as well. Um, you don't have to have it exactly there. And then we'll move on to the next step. Once you find exactly where you want your piece of um, paper to be, your collage piece, then you're going to take out a pencil. You can also use your pen and you're going to trace around it. Now that you have your image traced, you have the option that you can either leave your image glued on, uh, or you know, if we're using crayons, it's probably the best bet so that way you don't worry, you're not worried about having watercolor or different things leaking on and getting your image wet. 
but otherwise I suggest that you use a you permanent marker or your crayon on how you're creating that. So to create a crystal, and I have this available in our Google Classroom as well, is you're going to first start off with almost like the top of a triangle. And then what you're going to do is draw two angled lines straight down to the bottom of the paper. And then inside, you're going to create two lines sort of connect it and then do more angled lines. So let's take a look at this a little bit closer. So some things to keep in mind when you're doing this. It's okay if your lines aren't the same length. It's actually they look better if they're not. So what you're basically doing is you're creating these angled lines that um, when you draw them extending down from the tip of your crystal, you want to have between two or three. And that's about as much as you want. And you're always coming down and connecting them, drawing them not straight, but at an angle back to the hairline. And this way, it gives this look of layers with your crystals. And you start with doing the layers around the face and then you can work on the layers in the back. So as you keep practicing, refer back to that example sheet where it explains in slowly the steps of how you will continue building. You can add in um, with doing the same process, doing shorter layers or crystals in the front and then drawing taller layers of crystals behind that first set. So the nice part is, is that when you do the ones all the way in the back, you're not going to see the bottom of the crystal. So keep building until you feel you have completed it or filled for that hair length. And if you're doing an animal or you're doing a character, these are all great ways to play with building your lines. Something to consider too is when you're putting this together or you're looking at, you're wondering where the face is. You can take your image and put it right back on top and take a look at how it's looking. Maybe once you see it, you go, oh, I need to add more crystals here or in a different area. So play with that. If you feel like gluing it down immediately now, go right ahead and do that too. It's entirely up to you. this part, once you're finished with that, let's move on and glue our pieces on. So using your glue stick, why don't you stick that on and try to match it as best as you can to what you traced. For this next part, we're going to start using crayons. And what I'm going to have us work on is practicing using value. Because we have all of these overlapping crystals, looking like some are in the front, some are in the back, in order to really make them stand out, we need to create a value. And that's when we create a lightness and a darkness in a color. So what you're going to do is on the very left side, you're going to push as hard as you can, and this is going to create the darkest value. Then the middle section, you're going to press, you know, a little bit lighter, so you're gonna create a medium value. And then the right side of the crystal, you're gonna press as light as you can. So you're using one crayon, 
and on the left you're pushing as hard as you can in the middle you're doing me medium pressure and on the very right side of the crystal you're going to keep both those areas very light so this way you're creating a value of dark medium and light values you could switch up how you're using different colors maybe you're sticking with cool colors maybe you're going to do warm colors maybe you'll add in some rainbow-esque or create your own version either way follow that rule of thumb of going dark to medium to light as you go across the crystals Something to consider too is if you're not using crayon, you can use color pencil the same way. Just using one color pencil, you can push nice and hard and then move to the medium part and the light part. If you're doing the watercolor paint version, watercolors are great on this project too and can create a really nice result. When you do this, this is why you use either permanent marker or a crayon so that way none of the colors bleed onto or through the colors that you had on there. So um, the resist the crayon creates or the black permanent marker is that they don't move when you put water on top of it. So if you're using the paints, one thing that you should use and create is for the darker value on that very left hand side, when you're using the watercolor paint, make sure that you're using less water on your brush. In order to create a lighter value, you're then going to create a lighter value when you add more water. So think of a very watered down, um, something is gonna be lighter and if it has less water in it, it's gonna be darker. You can also, if you ever tried to do this at home, is add a little bit of you know those crystal formations by sprinkling a little bit of salt on the paper. 